All right. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on your location. I'm your host, radio and TV personality, Rob Pagetto, coming to you from Toronto, Ontario, where it's surprisingly chilly. It's actually 12 degrees. We're used to having something around the 20 degree mark at this time of year. But we're going to warm things up with a webinar. And uh, why don't we start now? Today, it's all about optimizing accounts payable. Three strategies for the biggest impact. We're going to be discussing key areas to focus on for big impact when looking to optimize accounts payable. Joining me, we have Cameron Keenan, Account Executive at Quadient AP by Beanworks. And I just found out Beanworks started right here in Toronto. Cameron has been with the company for over a year, helping finance professionals reduce the time and cost spent on accounts payable through automation. He's new and eager. Cameron, how are you doing today? I'm great, Rob. Really happy to be on the call today. Yes, very new, very eager, and uh, yeah, very excited for the webinar today. Fantastic. Also joining us is Matthew Harris, account executive from Quadient AP as well by Beamworks. Matt is an accomplished account executive with the accounts payable automation space. He's passionate about helping companies transform their processes and unlock operational efficiency. He has been with Quadient for over two years, having previously worked in the recruitment industry. Matthew, how are you doing today? Kind words. Yeah, no, very good. Thanks, Rob. Um, yeah, it's great to be here. Great to be here with everybody else on the webinar and excited to um, to share some insights into conversations that I've been having with various different people within finance over the last few years. So keen to, keen to get into it. We're going to get there in just a moment. Louise Graham, financial operations consultant, currently working with Travel Chapter. Now, Louise has worked in financial operations for over 30 years and started her career at the Walt Disney Company in London. Since then, she's worked for companies including Santander, Carphone Warehouse, Costa Coffee, and FCDO Services, which is part of the foreign office. She now works as a financial operations consultant for a travel company, and I might add that she loves people and process. She's married with two grown-up children and three cats. Louise, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing very well. That's quite an introduction, isn't it? Um, I, all I'm going to add to that is that it's cold here today and I don't like the hot weather, so I'm delighted. So I know that makes me strange, but um, I love the rain and uh, that's what I've got. So I'm living in the right country in the UK. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> London just loves the rain. All right. Now, since Quadient is our sponsor, why don't both you, Cameron and Matthew, tell us briefly about Quadient and what they do? Perfect. No, thank you, Rob. Um, so Quadient is actually a billion pound turnover company. We have a very rich history being over 100 years old. It's actually our 100th year anniversary in 2024. So hoping for a big party at the end of the year. But Today, Quadient has over 400,000 clients, and we are the leading provider of custom communi communications management solutions, really helping organizations of all sizes transform and modernize their communications to customers and stakeholders. Whether that's processing or sorting your mail-related operations, communicating directly to customers and stakeholders, or where I and Matt sit, processing and automating your document workflows in accounts payable. Just a brief intro there. Matthew, anything to add to that, my friend? No, I think that was a very good, yeah, a very good introduction. Um, me and Cameron work for the financial automation arm of the business, um, which is what we're here mainly to speak to you about today, which includes our accounts receivable automation solu solution and our accounts payable automation solution. So we're here, we do both sides of the coin, but I appreciate we're here today to talk more about accounts payable. Um and as you mentioned yourself, Rob, the the AP side of things started in um, in Canada, and we we uh, launched in the UK about two three years ago now. So very well established in the UK, um, and uh, yeah, it's great to be part of this this market as well. Fantastic. Well, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. The starting point for the accounts payable process is receiving the invoice and inputting the data. Always. So important. So we're keen to understand how you do this. Why don't we start by asking our audience to chime in on our poll. Audience, answer this. How do you currently input invoice data? Do you do it A, manual data entry, B, OCR, or C, using an AI tool? Now, while we're waiting for those results, 
Guys, what do you suggest is the best practice for extracting and inputting invoice data? Louise, why don't we start with you? Yeah, happy to start on that. Uh, so one of the things I think is interesting is that even in the past five years, I've still seen accounts payable departments where there are people manually typing in invoices, uh, all the information on the invoices, which is sort of unbelievable, given that we're in the 21st century. Uh, so I think the ideal way is that your invoices are received electronically, that you have a really good P2P process. So you have an order, a purchase order. So the expenditure is approved up front. You have a receipt. So you know that you've received the goods and then you have the invoice and that actually the invoice comes in, those three match um, and that you've just got a team that um, of human beings who look at only the exceptions, not all the things that auto matched. Um, and actually quite a long time ago, sort of 2006, I was working for an organisation that that had that in fact, and they were in, they were even called the exceptions handling team. It was a new team and they only handled the things that fell out that didn't have that three-way match. Um, they were, um, just as an aside, originally going to be called the special handling team uh, before everyone realized that would create an unfortunate an acronym. Uh, so, so we went with exceptions handling too. Wow, look at these numbers. I'm surprised that 53% of our audience is still using manual data entry, OCR 41%, and AI who is taking over the world is only at 6%. Matthew, what do you think about those numbers? Yeah, I mean, I'm, they're, they're not really surprising to me. I speak to a lot of customers still today that are, are manually entering invoices in, into their finance system. Um, but the, the question itself, I think, is a really important question because there are different types of data capture solutions out there. Um, there's some that only capture the header line information on the invoice. And then there are other solutions that capture both the header information and the line item detail. So it's, it's really, really important to understand your own requirements. We offer both solutions. So a lot of our customers have invoices with multiple line items on them. And each of those line items need to be coded slightly differently as well, which is where you have machine learning and AI and things like that that can come into play. So our line item capture solution can, can really help with this. So I think in, in to, to answer the question, it's really important to understand what your own requirements are. Do you require header information only or do you record that line item detail? And there are different data capture solutions out there that can really benefit, benefit you guys. But I think Louise did a great job in summarizing what the ideal accounts payable process um, could and, 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 sh and should look like. Cameron, let me ask you this. What kind of benefits can be expected from doing this? Great, great question. Um, you know, a big key one is removing any human error. I think for every hundred invoices, four to five invoices actually have human errors. And that can have, you know, big impacts. It's very easy to add on a couple of zeros and overpay vendors and then chase them back and try and get refunds or it's either picked up at a later stage in the approvals, you then have to recode these invoices. Again, another bit of wasted time. Um, OCR is really great at just removing those human errors, capturing what is exactly up, what is exactly on the invoice. And just going back to that poll, it's really interesting to see 41% OCR, and then only a very small percent actually using AI, because there are two types of OCR. You have templated OCR, we actually have to set up where this information needs to be picked up is a very long, laborious setup. And then you actually have AI OCR, which more modern tools use, where there's no templating, there's no setup, invoice comes in, and the AI engine actually understands where this information should be and how to pick it up. Again, just really making sure that those human errors aren't made. Yeah, so important. All right, let's go into our next discussion because that was quite informative. Thank you, guys. We know there can be various pain points in the AP process, but often invoice approvals are raised as a major challenge and disruption to getting suppliers paid on time. Now, I want you to take part in our poll and tell us how much of a challenge invoice approvals are for you. So audience, do invoice approvals cause or create challenges in getting suppliers paid on time? A, yes, significantly, B, yes, occasionally, or C, rare. Panel. Um, why do you think invoices or invoice approvals are such a big challenge? Matthew, why don't we start with you this time? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's another great question. I think, first of all, you have to look at what a typical process might look like. So without AP automation, invoices are typically approved by email 
or or in some sort of shared space like an Excel spreadsheet or even even these days Teams as well, um, which makes it really hard to keep track of the status of these invoices. Um, so in situations where suppliers um, are, are chasing for their payments or due dates are coming up um, to be paid, but invoices haven't been approved yet, it can be really hard to kind of keep track of what, what the status of those invoices are. And this can cause issues with suppliers. Uh, it can cause payments to go unpaid um, and therefore effectively effectively harming relationships. Um, so yeah, there's 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 some big challenges with the way that things are done now. And if you can look to centralize this and have this done on one platform, um, there's you know there's some there's certainly some benefits to be made there. So again, do invoice approvals cause create challenges in getting suppliers paid on time? We've got 53% saying yes significantly, close behind is occasionally and rarely. Louise, what do you think about those numbers? I think it's really interesting because like that's 90% where the answer is more or less yes. Um, so um, I think, first of all, the really big thing um, about this is it's almost never accounts payable's fault. Uh, so it's almost always uh, people in the business haven't approved the invoice because they don't know how to receive it. They don't receive deliberately because they want to see the invoice because they like having a look at a bit of paper. Very old fashioned view, but I think there's still a bit of that about um, and sometimes they just put it low on their priority list because, hey, what do they care if the supplier's not paid on time? So I think it's very, very rarely is the issue in accounts payable. Um, mostly it's issue in the business. And I think uh, my answer would be to um, name and shame, but actually the better way of saying it would be to do some really good reporting and provide some really great data on where are the invoices sitting. And you'll probably find it's 80-20. Uh, you know, 80% of your invoices are with with the, with with a, a certain number of people. Um, and actually, if you can get those people to comply, then you'll drive a big improvement in payment. Uh, so, yeah, I think those are really interesting numbers, but I'm not surprised. You know, I saw Matthew Cameron got a little chuckle when you said it's never the AP fault. <laughs> the camera, why, why were you smiling about that? Yeah, no, I, I agree uh, 100%. Um, and I think the, the true challenge is, is it's the time and energy spent on an invoice approval and then the length of that approval. Mm -hmm. And just like uh, Louise said, it's an 80-20 split. Um, typically, you can look at this by the amount of time it's actually spent chasing for those approvals. It's not sending it to the right person. It's actually just chasing it, getting it done, getting it approved. And that's where people are spending most of the time on emails, on paper, or on the lack of visibility, figuring out where they need to chase. And that's where they're spending most of the time in that approval process. To be honest, it's very easy to draft an email, send it to the right person. It's just a matter of now remembering to chase it, remember to get it done and get it approved. Matthew, how do you suggest the process um, you know, can become smoother? Yeah, I mean, by using an AP system, first of all, you're going to have everything in one place. OK, so you don't have to maintain multiple different sets of data, <laughs> like in email, in the finance system or in Teams. Everything is being tracked in one location. So this gives you visibility over where invoices are within the process. Um, you can see quite e quite easily what ones are, being, uh, are sitting at pending approval. And therefore, that allows you to effect effectively communicate with suppliers as to why invoices maybe haven't been approved yet or why they've been rejected. Um, Cameron's point there on you know the time it takes to chase um, people for approval can also be taken care of within the system um, so the system can do the chasing for you you can set automatic reminders for for approvers because like louise said sometimes it's just not high on people's priority lists to approve invoices and it can easily get forgotten especially if they're just having to maintain their email inbox so if you can provide them one central location where they can come on and approve the invoices they need to approve, whether that's daily or summarized weekly, um, it's nice and streamlined. They can do that and just get on with their day. It, it's no longer a, an, an annoyance or an inconvenience to them. Um, especially with us, we also have a mobile app um, where individuals can approve invoices on the mobile app, which just allows for a smoother, a smoother process, especially if you've got approvers that are out on the go if you've got businesses like construction firms and things like that that might be on site somewhere um and they don't have access to a laptop or something like that so it can 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 really help and it can boost relationships with suppliers and make make sure that invoices do get paid on time 
Louise, you've been in this industry for 30 years. Do you have any helpful hints to make things a little smoother as well? Yeah, I think you sort of, uh, you need to explain to your business why they need to approve invoices and get them paid on time. I think they need to understand the amount of, you know, it's not good use of anyone's time chasing people to approve invoices, is it? Uh, we've either had the goods and services and we need to pay for them or we haven't, in which case we need to query them. The only other thing I'd say is that what I've come across quite a lot is that people don't know how to, what to do when there's a problem with an invoice. So it's easy to click approve. That's probably the easiest part. If you've got a dispute, people seem to think that accounts payable should resolve that, um, which is generally not the case because how would accounts payable know whether you ordered 50 pens or five pens? We wouldn't, right? So I think you need to make it really easy for people in your business to dispute invoices. They need to understand that they need to dispute it with the supplier. They need to put it in dispute on your ERP system. Um, and then they need to approve it when the dispute is resolved. And they can ask for advice. I think accounts payable should be able to give advice about what do we want? Do we want a full credit, a partial credit? What you know, What is it we're looking for? Um, that's the kind of thing people in the business don't necessarily understand. So I think make it really easy for people to understand what to do when there's a problem, uh, as well as making it easy for them to approve, as well as making sure they probably, they know why they should approve on time. Yeah. Yeah, I think the key word here is communication. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's get into our next discussion. We all know how important it can be to pay employee expense claims in a prompt fashion, but how you receive expense claims can be very time consuming for those submitting. Receiving and approving the claims, how does this look for you? Let's go to another poll. How do you receive T and E claims? Do you receive them through paper claim with receipts, kind of old school, by email, or see via an app or expense management software? While we're waiting for the results of that poll, let's go back to our panel. And uh, let me ask you, Cameron, what kind of issues have you seen when companies have a slow T&E submission and approval process? There must be all kinds of issues. Frustrated employees is a, is a big one. Um, me, myself, as a salesperson, throughout the years, I've always had scrumpled up pieces of receipts that I've had to email, send to finance or, you know, try and find them um, and send them to them. And, you know, it, it means that the reimbursement of myself for traveling is delayed. It's not digitalized. It's not simple. It's not easy. It's, it's hard for me to actually try and get those invoices, sorry, those receipts actually paid at previous companies. Um, if you digitalize that and you actually improve the user journey, you're going to see a much more happier path for your employees to get that money back and for them to be reimbursed for, you know, uh, expenses that sometimes they, they shouldn't really be making. Matt, do you find the same problems or anything else that uh, has come across your desk? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I think it's important to, to outline that from a financial perspective and from finance teams, they are, you know, they, they need to make sure that these these expenses have been have been approved. Often with a lot of customers that we speak to, the onus is on the employee to get their manager to sign off on a document or to email approval, and then they'll send that forward to finance with the attachment. Um, what we think is that it doesn't necessarily have to be down to the employee to get that approval themselves. All they want to do is say that I've paid for this. It needs to be approved and be paid. Um, I think the other thing is when it comes to um, maintaining and uploading receipts. They have to then generally store their receipts somebody somewhere, either take a photo on their phone or keep their receipts in, in, in their wallets as they go throughout the month until it comes to actually making that claim. Um, whereas we have a solution where they can upload those receipts as they go and then just bin them. So they don't have to worry about keeping hold of them to prove that they've actually paid for, for what they want to get expensed for. Um, so yeah, there's there's a few things there for sure. Louise, not long ago, uh, was all paper claim with receipts. Looks like email is up to 33% and an app or expense management software, 56%. The numbers are starting to speak for themselves and they're changing. It's interesting, isn't it? Compared to invoice processing, look at the automation and expense processing compared to invoice processing much higher. Uh, so it's interesting. I think with invoice, uh, with expense processing, it's a very uh, emotive subject. I think people get very upset when they don't get paid on time, quite understandably. Um, and, and I also think what's been very interesting in some of my um, uh, last few years experience is that some companies have credit cards and let pay, people pay on credit cards and the company pays the card. Some people uh, some have to spend their own money and then put the claim in. 
guess which one they put in quicker? Um, I don't, we don't even need a poll for that, right? So when people are spending their own money, their claims are in really, really fast. They're, they're in like that. Oh, yeah, I can see somebody laughing at that. That's so true. <laughs> um, but when, uh, when, when it's the company credit card, you probably have to chase them to put in all the receipts for the money they've spent, which is the company's money. So I, I think it's a very emotional subject. And I think actually it's very interesting to see those numbers um, that, that we've got a lot of automation around accounts payable. I think it's really important to get it right. And I think it's really important to tell people if you put a claim in on this date, it will be paid on that date. So you need to have deadlines for payments and you need to stick to those deadlines and tell people, you know, this is our payment schedule. It will be weekly or monthly or whatever it is. And then if you ever miss that again, we're down to communication again. You need to tell people if you're not going to make the payment on that date, you need to tell them. So, yeah, interesting starts there. Again, we're back to, like you said, communication and clarity, being straight up. And just saying, here's the deadline, here's the deadline, follow it. This will make all of our lives easier. Um, so let me ask all three of you, how can companies improve their T&E claim and approval process? Uh, I'll start with you, Matthew. Yeah, I think by having a, a, a solution where employees can upload receipts on the go, as and when they're actually paying for the expense, um, so that they don't have to therefore remember to keep hold of the receipts and um, meet deadlines. They can upload them as they go so they don't lose their receipts. Um, and then when it comes to actually submitting that claim, um, if they can trust that there's approval workflows within the system that are going to are going to get those, those expenses approved on time, then they know that they're going to be paid on time as, as well. So they, I think ultimately you want to make it as easy for everybody within the process and have one central location um, that people can communicate on um, and everything can be can be tracked. Now, Cameron, before I ask you for your input, uh, just to our audience, remember there is that webinar chat box. Uh, if you have any questions thus far, please do, you know fire a question out because I'll uh, field it to our panelists. So yeah, Cameron, you know how can companies improve their teeny claim um, with their approval process? Why don't you chime in on that? Yeah, definitely. Well. Um... You know, digitalizing everything is not only going to improve the user journey for people raising claims and getting claims paid quicker, but it's actually going to result in less data entry for your APT. You know, a big topic that we're talking about today. Um, you've got 100 invoices, you have to do data entry, OCR, it's perfect. Why can't you do that for expense claims as well? And that's exactly what these types of solutions can do. They can remove... 80% of the data entry, you're now just reviewing, making sure that the GL codes are correct, your cost centers are correct, et cetera. And then just syncing that data back into your finance system Absolutely. without having to do much data entry. You know, it's, it's gonna be another time saving exercise for your APT. Louise, you wanna comment on that? Yeah, just another sort of thing I'd add to that is that it's important that people know what they can and can't claim for. So your expenses policy needs to be really comprehensive um and make it clear what people can and can't claim for i've seen some very dodgy claims in my time um i'll just give you two examples one uh, was a claim for a dartboard because somebody was a bit bored on a business trip not appropriate was was refused and another was a claim for a really expensive bottle of wine because someone was very very stressed on a business trip and again uh, that that was escalated to the finance director and that one was not 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 uh, not allowed uh, so i i'd say make it really clear about what will and won't be allowed on your policy so your policy needs to be really comprehensive all right um so we need to talk a little further on this because it's such an important subject. And I think having all three of you um, on this panel has been fantastic. So let me ask you, uh, each of you, number one thing that you find is the biggest problem uh, when it comes to AP. Louise. Behavior of people in the business and their approvals. Uh, not just their approvals, their inability to follow the P2P process. So it's about people not raising purchase orders on time, not raising purchase orders for the right value, not raising purchase orders before they commit the company to a liability, uh, and people not receiving as well because they want to see the invoice or because they haven't got time or because, let's face it, uh, they just don't see it as a priority. So I think it's business behaviour is the biggest issue in AP. I think if people in the business did what they should do, AP teams would have a lot easier uh, time of it um, and sometimes they don't do it because they don't know how to do it so I, I, I'm not saying all the blame li lies with our business colleagues uh, but and 
again, it's the job of AP to say, here's our P2P process, this is how you need to follow it, and to provide really good uh, management information that, that shows where it goes wrong and it helps people to get it right, really. What about you, Cameron? Yeah, Rob. So for me, it is double or even triple data entry. I've spoken to clients who receive an invoice. They then put that invoice into a spreadsheet tracker. They'll then go in, do the data entry, the invoice, match it to a PO and copy it across. But originally, that PO has been created. It's been approved. It has your geo code. It has your departments. It has your items, your values. Why on earth are you not using that data to be married and copied over into the invoice? You're still doing double data entry, and then you're either putting it into a tracker as well to figure out where the invoice is on the approval process. Um, for me, you know, an AP solution is just going to remove so much data entry and give you guys so much more of your time back with OCR, with digital approvals, with automatic PO matching. You're now only looking at invoices where there's a variance and you're copying all that lovely PO data across into the invoice, just making your life much easier and much more simple. How about you, Matthew? Yeah, I think those are really both really good points. And if I was being honest, I would probably say approvals and data entry were the two biggest challenges. But I've got another one that I think ties in quite nicely to both of those. Um, and that's having and maintaining parts of the AP process in different in different areas. Um, so you've got some customers and this is going to differ between, you know, the challenge is going to differ depending on the customer that you're speaking to, of course. But um, some customers are creating POs in one place. Approvals are being done by email. Invoices are going into the finance system. And it's very hard to keep track of all that information when they're, they're done in three different separate methods. So if you can have a solution that centralizes everything in one place, it makes it very easy to track, makes it every, very easy to communicate with all parties involved. Um, I think that's great. So to summarize that, I think you know a big challenge is having multiple systems as part of the AP process that struggle to, to speak to each other. If you can have one system that does everything in one place, then you know, then 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 that could be really good. What about AI? I know I've uh, you know hosted a few other webinars with other panelists, and AI is on the forefront. It's uh, part of a lot of discussions. How do you guys feel about AI? Let's start with you, Louise. If I'm really honest, I'm a little bit scared of it, uh, but that's the you know. That's 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 uh, that's T two, and that's also I've recently um, in the last couple of years I've read some applications from people applying for jobs where they've clearly written the cover letter with ChatGPT, and it's just not not felt like a real response from a person. So uh, that having been said, I think of course it's going to be useful. Automation is the right thing to do, especially in accounts payable. Uh, of course, you want most things to go straight through. Uh, so yeah, I think um, caution. I'm, I'm I caution cautiously uh, welcome it. Matthew Cameron, what about you guys? Yeah, I think that's the right that's the right way to go about it. I think for a lot of people, it's it's new and and it can be scary, and it's going to take some time to learn to trust something that's not necessarily human to do the to do the human things, right? Um, and I, and that's why I think it's important when choosing a solution that you do choose a solution that's going to speed up the process and take care of some of those mundane tasks, but still gives you that element of that element of control. To, to have the oversight and to sense check everything before it actually gets posted to, to the ledger or, or finally approved. Um, some of the best feedback that we get, and I speak to customers all the time that are a little bit cautious, a little bit scared of, of, of the AI side of it. Um, but after six months of using the solution, 12 months of using the solution, they just can't remember or think of how they, how they used to do it before you know it's like i can't believe how, i don't know how i used to live without this right and i think it's one of those things where because it is so new in five ten years time people are going to be wondering how they did things without it um and it's just part of that you know natural process and progression in, in today's society i think personally cameron you still need that human element do don't you Yes, 100% Rob right now. And we've actually got narrow AI. This is what the, the AI we're experiencing, where it is limited. You give it a set of rules, set of instructions. It's not quite fully thinking and cognitive. Um, in that regard, it should be seen as an assistant. It's it's, it's superpower. It's there to, to give you time saving and to make your life a life a lot easier. Um, I mean, to touch on what, what Matt said, you know, we've got a really great solution called Straight Through Processing now where a PO can come in, automatically match the invoice and any receivings, and AP don't even need to look at it. 
that that is now uh, an invoice which if it's a hundred percent match you won't even need to have eyes on it it's not going to flow into your finance system but even a lot of clients are still very hesitant about that they they think oh i quite like the look of that but they're not quite sure about it and it takes a bit of time it takes a bit of time using the platform piloting it and then they're like actually this is amazing let's let's go ahead with that great added feature so it's an element of trust and to me it's it's here to assist it's here to make your life easier it's here to assist not to replace you exactly there we go well since i'm with you here cameron any final thoughts on today's discussion Final thoughts. No, I've, I've really enjoyed myself. Um, it's been great speaking with, with you guys and, and uh, getting some insights um, from you as well. Um, maybe one thing for me, guys, if you are looking around the market for an AP solution, the number one priority for you guys is the integration into your finance system. Um, you want to make sure that is solid. That is amazing. Um, first, before going ahead and maybe purchasing the product. So if you are looking around the market, how does it integrate into your finance system? That should be your number one priority. Well done. Thank you, Cameron. Matthew, final thoughts, my friend. Yeah, no, I think it's been a fantastic webinar. Um, I think it's been amazing to have Louise on the call, somebody that can share insights from a financial perspective. I'm not a finance professional. Cameron's not a finance professional. We don't pretend to be. We enjoy speaking to the finance professionals about the challenges and offering solutions, but it's great to get insight from, from somebody as experienced as Louise that have actually gone through these these challenges and, and have worked through them with different, different solutions. So some really good insights there. Um, you know, I think it's really important for, for anybody listening to call to this call that is interested in in an ap automation solution is to to understand your requirements and your process in detail um you know before choosing what solution that you want to you want to use and um me myself and cameron are more than happy to have conversations with you to help you through that and to, to guide you on what what solution is going to be best but yeah it's been uh it's been a great talk louise over to you yeah final thoughts for me really interesting discussion I think AP at its absolute best is when uh, technology and people are working together in harmony to deliver a really good service to the business, which means that it's easy for them to do approvals. It's uh, suppliers are happy because they're paid on time or paid to terms. So you're getting your settlement discounts or whatever it is that you've got agreed. So I think it's a mixture. It's about people and process and technology all working together really Really well so i think that 53 percent of people who are still typing invoices i'm very very surprised to see that you you guys need to uh be thinking about automation in your future i think because uh yeah like cameron said you you, you will wonder how you ever managed without it i think louise cameron matthew thank you to our panelists and i'm sure if you have any questions or concerns you can reach out to them directly or find them on linkedin and of course this webinar has been taped so you can always go back and watch it again as it's full of incredible information. Thank you all three of you. And of course, thank you to our audience. And remember, keep your stick on the ice. The only reason I'm saying that is because it's 12 degrees here in Toronto. Feels like hockey is <laughs> about to start. <laughs> I'm Rob Pagetto. Thanks again. Take care. Cheers, Rob. Thank you. Thank Cheers, you. Rob. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks. thanks. Bye.